let's talk about how to factor quadratic trinomials with large numbers. I gave you steps that work most of the time, but sometimes the numbers are a little bit big when you multiply A times C, and it's difficult to list all of the factors. So the first thing we should do is review multiplication. We have two binomials here. Let's multiply these out. We have 2x times the second bracket, minus 3 times the second bracket, and our trinomial is 6x squared minus x minus 12. So I want to look at this quadratic trinomial, our product, and try to figure out where it came from given the factors that we started with. Because remember, when we're factoring, we're trying to find those factors. So let's look at the 6x squared here. We can see that the 6x squared is right here, and it came from multiplying 2x by 3x. So when we multiplied the first terms, we got our first term in the quadratic trinomial. What about this negative 12? We see the negative 12 here. It came from multiplying this negative 3 by 4. In fact, it's right here. Multiplying the last terms in each of the brackets. So it's pretty obvious where that first term came from and where the last term came from. But what about the middle? It's that middle term that's a little bit difficult to find because we can't obviously see it when we're looking at our factors. That middle term came from multiplying. Let's see. Uh, When we multiplied the outside, we got 8x. When we multiplied the inside, negative 9x. The sum of these products, 8x and negative 9x, is negative x, our middle term. So if we can find the middle term, then we're good. To find the middle term, we have to add the product of the outside terms. All right, we did that there. The outside and the inside terms. Without multiplying them out, find the middle terms for the following products. Pause your video, give it a try. Well, we see the outside here is negative 8x. The inside is negative 3x. That means our middle term is negative 11x. The outside, 11x. The inside, negative 5x. Our middle term will be 6x. Hmm. The outside, 6x. The inside, 4x. Here's our middle term. The outside, the inside, the middle. So now that we know how to find the middle, let's try factoring a trinomial with large numbers. We first need to think about the options for the first term. 
Well, we know we could have one and 12, or two and six, or three and four. Our options for the last term are only one and five. So that means I can have one and 12 in the front, that'll give me 12x squared, or two and six, that will give me 12x squared, or three and four, that will also give me the first term of 12x squared. All I have to do now is figure out whether the one and five works with each of these. Remember, we want a middle term of 4x. Mm, I should have left myself a bit more room. Let's see. I'll make this one 2 and 6. We'll make this one 3 and 4. All right. We want a middle term of plus 4x. I know that when I put the 1 and 5 in here, it's going to give me a 5 for sure at the end. So let's check for the middle term. Remember to find the middle, we're using the outside and the inside. This definitely does not give me 4x. So what if I change these around? Now I have 1x and 60x. Again, doesn't give me a 4x in the middle, so that means I know for certain that this is not going to work. Let's try the 1 and 5 here. When we check the outside, we have 10x. When we have check the inside, we have 6x. 10x minus 6x gives us a 4x. That means I know I have to subtract the 6 because I want a positive 10. There you go, we've factored this one. We don't need to use this one at all. But remember, it's a good idea when you're factoring, especially on a test, to check. Does this give you the product you want? I would suggest you pause your video and give it a try. So let's look at another one. Why don't you pause your video and see if you can answer these first two questions. So again, we have three options for the first terms but this time, two options for the last terms. So I'm gonna write out my options for the first terms twice. That way we can try both options for the last terms. Let's check this one first. So we put in the one, and the 35. We know we need to check the outside 
and the inside. If we add those, it's going to give us 67. If we subtract, it will give us three. So that didn't work. Let's switch these around. Now the outside is 1x and the inside is greater than 900. This is never going to give us a negative 76. So we know that this one doesn't work with the 1 and the 35. What if we try 5 and 7? The outside, 7x. The inside, 160. Not going to give us negative 76 whether I add or subtract. If I switch these around, now the outside is 5x and the inside is 224. Again, this does not give us a negative 76. We're looking for that middle term. So 1 and 32 don't work at all. Let's try 2 and 16. We know that 2 by 16 is going to give us that 32x squared. So if we try 1 and 35, the outside gives us 70. Hmm, close. The inside, 16. Doesn't give us a 76. If we add them, it would give us 86. If we subtract, 54. What if we switch them around? Now, the outside gives us 2x, and the inside, wow, gives us a number greater than 300. That's not going to work either. So what if we try five and seven over here? The outside, 14x. The inside, 80. If we add them, it would give us 94. If we subtract them, 66. We're getting closer. Maybe if we switch them around. No, not going to work. It's too big, that 7 by 16. So we know that 2 and 16 don't work either. Can you see how I'm working through each of these sets of numbers in a methodical way? Sometimes that's just the best way to do it. Take your time. I know these first terms give me 32x squared, and now I can try 1 and 35. The outside, oh, this isn't looking very good, is it? Nope, sure isn't. And neither does it look very good if I switch the order, because 35 times 8 gives me a number greater than 240. It's just too big. So let's try five and seven over here. The outside is 28. The inside is 40. It's closer, 68. Maybe if we switch them around. Now the outside is 20x and the inside is 56. If I add those, it will give me 76. I need a negative 76. That means they both need to be negative. Negative 20 and negative 56. There you go. We've got it factored.